Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. Episode 3, a Star Wars special, The Rise of the PS5. With me, George, and as always joined by Tom, Mace Windu to my Star Wars kid. Tom, <laughs> how's it going? I'm alright, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Top of the show. Big question. Everybody wants to know. What have you been playing? Uh, I finally finished uh, Sekiro, um, Shadows Die Twice. Really good game. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of uh, spoiler territory here, um, we'll just for on. a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, all right. So, listeners, if you don't want to know about <clears throat> Sekiro, Sekiro, spoilers, Sekiro. Uh, you've got two minutes from now. Go okay, on. so final boss, uh, Ishin, uh, the Sword Saint. Yeah. Um, we're a PG podcast, so I can't throw out some of the words I was using at the weekend. It took a long time, <laughs> uh, probably <laughs> phew, four or five hours, not constantly, but overall just learning the, the boss patterns and yeah. the moves and learning what ba- best way to deal with uh, with that. Um Watched a few YouTube videos, which are always helpful. Um, he went there. Just, yeah, as he says, yeah. You need Sunk the to those to depths. Pull it off. Yeah. yeah, you still need the skills to pull it off. Still That's what I'm saying. Skills. Yeah. Um, so yeah, finally destroyed him, uh, and just like really good relief in a way. Great game, but and, and that was it the reached, final boss. It was yeah. Uh, I have started a new game plus, um, which the. Fans like of the all game gamers online. with the best of intentions go in there with the new yeah. game plus, don't they? They're... And I was thinking, this will be great. I can go in with all my powered up stuff and weapons and moves and such. The enemies are level to you, so I just uh, struggled through the start oh, so of the game though, again. Even though you've one up yourself and you've new game plus, yeah. it's one of those classic scenarios where you're not going to just cakewalk through the bad guys because the bad guys have all... The bad guys, the baddest dad, the bad, the bad guys, guys. <laughs> they've leveled up to a similar level to you, so it's just as hard as it ever was. Yeah, it is. Um, we'll get out of spoiler uh, well, realms you've got now. Another 20 seconds, so you know, you can feel free to say something absolutely controversial. Um, no, just uh, stick with the game if you're still trying to finish it. Um, it's well worth it, and you do get better, I think. You, it just it does click the controls and everything so uh, yeah really enjoyed that and that's done and finished and that's as we're out the spoiler window so hopefully yeah. everyone's arrived back at this point in the <coughs> podcast and they're happy because if they haven't finished Sekiro yeah they certainly can look forward to it now yeah good luck with that everyone before we plough on into any more games that you've been playing and some games that I've been playing yeah we'll just let the people know that we've got news coming up PS5 news yeah. And we've also got the feature of the week is Star Wars. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about um, the top five Star Wars games, our choices. And we've got some listener letters. Yeah. We've had some feedback. And, we've had uh, to reach out, haven't we? We, we have. But we'll get to that. So what else have you been playing, Tom? Did you go for a palate cleanser after Sekiro? Or did you just uh, I feel I feel in? like I need one. Uh, I always something go for a palate cleanser. far less stressful. Always go for um, a I have... Uh, I've always mixed it up with playing a bit of Overwatch as well because it's, it's quite chilled out in a way. Ugh. You won't have the online shooter, will you? <laughs> I just won't. I just, it's just I can't consume that. It's not for me. But that's why we're good. We yeah. have different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Um, uh, so tell me. N- nothing else. Um, not guilty that I've of been having playing. any other games at all. Uh, no, I need to play the Order eighteen eighty six that yes, you, you recommended. Yeah, I downloaded it on there. Um, for the price that it came out at. How can anyone not? I believe it, it may still be for sale on the PlayStation Store, so it's worth checking out. Well, definitely, if you haven't got that, if it's sort of around the seven pound mark, I would say yeah, you're not going to leave unhappy for the price you paid. <clears> I think <throat> when that game first came out, thirty nine ninety nine, whatever it was, that would have been a tough sell. Yeah. But I think now, especially you and I know what each other are into. And I think you were looking at maybe doing a deep dive on that one day. Oh, I think uh, further so. down the I line for a podcast. Yeah. And I think if any game deserves a sequel, once so, they've um, built the world and they've done all that work, it'd be a shame not to carry it on. If uh, if anyone else has played The Order and uh, has got any points on it, get in touch with us. And uh, how would they do that? 
They can reach us at uh, questions at unofficial controller uh, podcast uh, yeah, dot com. com. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, they... direct, direct messages on Twitter or Instagram at unofficial controller. Like many of you had. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing. What have I been playing? I've been playing Yakuza Zero, which I've now finished. Um, finished John the main story. Whoa, hang We're on. We're completionists this week. When, when, mm, well, yeah, try us. Well, sort of, aren't we? We've tried. There is no try. I only do. <laughs> there is. For the Star Wars theme, <laughs> he wields out the Yoda quote. Uh, so I've finished the main story in that, and I jumped straight into Kiwami 1. Uh, I've obviously played the other one, the original on PS2, which... My, if my memory's playing tricks on me, I think I had an English dub with actors such as Mark Hamill and stuff, but Kiwami launches straight into a Japanese uh, original take with the subtitles at the bottom, as Zero was, which is, is pretty cool. Um, it's like the ending felt a bit disjointed for me. I didn't quite understand the transition that Goro went through without giving too much away yeah. uh, to the character. that like, I knew the character that he was in the <coughs> newer games, and I think that's you know he's a cool character. But the character I played as in Zero, for me, was like a real cool cat. Yeah. Uh, so when he makes... All the way through, I was thinking, how, how is this this guy? How how does he become the Goro of the later games? And that really... like I kind of understand it a little bit now, but I'm still really none the wiser how we could go from a real slick-looking dude to a, a guy with a wedge and a very loud snakeskin jacket, no shirt. I have a saying I usually uh, say to... One of my friends is uh, if something, especially Nintendo games, I just look at him and go Japanese, and he just understands that it's just that. Well, that might bit be of that might be the because it Goro becomes a very bizarre character. <laughs> uh, now I need to go back through and enjoy my time with the hostess's bar, hostess bar as Goro Club Sunshine, little place in my heart for that, and Kiryu's Real Estate Empire. Uh, I haven't mentioned this on the podcast, but I've been playing through on the PS2. Kingdom Hearts finished one, and now we're on a Kingdom I heard Hearts all about that. two playthrough. Yeah, um, thoroughly well put together game. Two solves a lot of the issues on the PS2. I think yeah. the one point five maps the cameras to the right stick, which makes it a lot more user friendly. So did Kingdom Hearts one just not use the it, analog sticks? It at was all? in that awkward teen phase of really trying to work out what to do with the camera. So the camera was mapped <laughs> to the uh, left and right triggers. So you kind of drive the screen around with left and right. The right stick's completely redundant, and it feels quite clumsy. But as soon as you get into two, it's a, it's a full-grown game, so it's learned the camera controls, and it's mapped them to the right I stick. I do love a game where the main enemy is the camera. <laughs> and Kingdom Hearts 1, the main enemy is the camera. I will yeah. give you that, absolutely. Uh, I also... This is a little bit of what I want to play, but I don't think we'll have time at the end of the show to really go into this as much as I'd like to. But I've picked up 24 The Game uh, for PS2, and I've been considering doing a retrospective on this. It supports HD natively, so that'll be nice on the modern TVs. Uh, and I was thinking, this is a Sony-produced game. If this came out tomorrow, or last year at some point in time, it would be receiving the same hype as Spider-Man. <laughs> Yet this game failed on many levels, and I want to find out why. So I might use that as my palate cleanser before I dive into Kiwami okay. 1. Okay. Um, Will it be like Lair, do you think, and you'll find out very quickly why it was uh, not received that well? Do you know what? The pit <laughs> that's reserved for Lair at the it's back of the room. house. It's got room. It's got room. It's six at foot At the deep. back of the bunker. It's six. I can stack these games six foot high. <laughs> it's not an issue for me. Uh, yeah, and they can all take a sabbatical until we're that low on content that we need to go dig them out uh, <laughs> if, if such a thing should be done. Uh, Tom, I mean, I think we should probably head deep into the news. Um, now, as yeah. always, listeners, we've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. The green screen PC in the corner has been on, on fire. It's been on fire, Tom. Yeah. Tom, hit me up. What's hot off the press? Hot off the press, the PS5 rises. I so, like what you've done there. PS5 Rises, much like Star... Star Rise of the Skywalker. Give what me a bizarre some title. I don't know what I'm coming out with, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to the Star Wars. We'll get to the Star Wars meat in the sandwich very shortly. Tell me about this PS5 news. 
Uh, Sony PS5 has been confirmed in an interview with Mark Cerny and an exclusive with Wired that PS5 is inbound. Wow. Uh, details as we see them. Uh, PS5 uh, coming, it's not in 2019, going to be 2020. Well, we haven't had a date, well, but we assume yeah, 2020. Yeah. That would make the most sense. Right? Um, it's compatible with PSVR, which um, is, is great because you're an owner of that. And, yeah, straight um, out of the box. I'm maybe going to look at... anything with that. Getting that now, it's confirmed it's going but to be... I, well, a part of me was thinking about that. Is they're probably not wanting to wall off the PSVR early adopters, but something tells me that PS5 is going to launch with an upgraded PSVR headset. I think they're going to get rid of the wires, aren't they? I've, That's what they wanted. We do. talked about it last week, guys. Yeah. And if you ever thought that we were hot takes <clears> on the industry, we did this last week. Yeah. And it's out. News. Yeah. Hot news. <laughs> it's uh, that computer. It's got... A t- it's it's wired into the dark ha- web. It is. Yeah, we've hacked Ticks Mark Cerny's personal... <laughs> I don't know what he uses. His Nokia. His Blackberry. Pager. His Pager. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. Uh, what else is going on with this PS4? Um, this is a really big thing. It's backwards compatible with PS4. So as soon as you go launch day and get that new console, you're going to be playing... Well, you're not going to be short of games to play if you've had a PS4. Um, Do you know what? I recommend launch title for the PS5. Go get yourself a PS4 launch title. <laughs> like I did with the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell, me about the, tell me about the graphical fidelity of this machine, Tom. Um, apparently it's going to be 8K compatible. 8K the mind boggles. When a lot of us still haven't got 4K, it's uh, going to be 8K compatible. You know what, but the, we'll, the one we'll... thing that makes me nervous about this, is this going to go and basically dump 4K off the radar and everyone's going to upgrade? No, I don't think so. I think 8K tellies are pretty pricey. Do you remember, um... the, do you remember when I... Do you remember when I got the 360, had that rear projection thing, and got all geared up for HD, and that just not, was not capable? Am I living in a retrospective 4K to 8K scenario now, where I've walked my And then I'll down? crack out the 8K telly in. Yeah, it was like... 499 quid at Curry's on a deal. Yeah. That's about my look. Uh, tell them, oh, let me tell them, no load times, or massively reduced load times due to the solid state hard drive. That's good news, Tom. Yeah, um... Especially uh, looking back, game really good game, Devil May Cry Five, but mm-hmm. some terrible loading times on that. Uh, it'd be good to see well, stuff like that. Come when down, I it's... was reading the interview in Wired or on Wired, whichever which way around that is, um, Mark Cerny was. It, it kind of detailed how they had gone to see him, or he'd gone to see them, and he had a PS4 Pro, yeah, and he had a PS5 development kit but running at the low end specs of what the PS5 development kit will do. And they had two screens, did a section in Spider-Man where they did like a, a load in of an area. Now the PS4 Pro took about 15 to 18 seconds from memory. Don't hold me to that, but it was something in that region which was acceptable or has been acceptable. The one running on the PS5 development kit was instantaneous for the same graphical loadout. So loading Spider-Man into a new area in Manhattan yeah. took about 15 seconds on PS4 Pro, instantaneous on the PS5. That's oh, yeah. outstanding. That would be good for a sequel as well for Spider-Man. If that, if that ends up Hopefully becoming... That's yeah, exactly. And, and the other one, which is all about Captain Phasma's helmet, ray tracing support. Uh, that's got many uses, but mimics lights bouncing off surfaces and can support enemy AI. Apparently, it's used to sort of. I saw a sorry. Carry on. Uh, I saw a couple of screenshots of like a a car near some burning wreckage. They showed one, and then they showed it with the uh, this tracing support, and like the light of the fire was reflecting off the car, which is quite a cool effect. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know how these effects have been achieved to this point yeah. in time, but to think that there's a way to accurately recreate the light source in bouncing off. The one thing that sort of piqued my attention was the way that the ray tracing supports enemy AI. It's kind of used as a an intelligence to the enemy. So if it decides whether it can hear something within a certain radius, seemingly it's these ray tracing algorithms that yeah. support that. Because we talked last week about how games have come on graphically, but the AI seems to be a little bit Mega Drive, doesn't it, at times? On some games, yeah. I think there are others where... 
you, you actually are quite shocked that the AI is capable of. Well, of I've like, been hearing about Division Two, where these people have people have been getting flanked by AI. Yeah, yeah, that's impressive. AI. That's we want to see more of that because it's going to help people get more involved uh, well, into the game, really. If that's uh, if that's rolling out and making it more difficult, I might need like a <laughs> stabilizer mode <laughs> <laughs> to get to, to grips of the game before I get my juggernaut Call of Duty style. Yeah, before I get my bottom. Take the extra damage. I need a little bit more help learning the controls. <clears throat> um, so that's 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 quite. Just before we move on, that's that's pretty big news. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen any. Uh, price for launch or launch date well, or any images to, of the console the or the only controller. Reference to pricing that we've had has been the Mark Cerny saying it would be very interesting to gamers. <laughs> but yeah, you know, broad spectrum. That could be one ninety nine. Yeah. That could be four thousand pounds, couldn't it? Both of those prices are interesting. It will be interesting because we'll be talking about it on the podcast. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, you know, we're always looking for content, and if we could, yeah. do Mark Cerny thinks that four thousand pounds is acceptable. <laughs> you, you know, if so- that came bundled with an eight K telly and a VR upgraded headset, would you be down? I'd be down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Everyone's got a second mortgage we live in a these bunker, days, right? Right. It's not hard to access the dark web and get one of my kidneys sold. Yeah. Job done. Um, bunker yeah, is need... good real estate. In the what? Bunker is very good real estate. We are not. We can't sell the bunker. Mm-hmm. We'd be homeless. We can't do this podcast in the bush. No. <laughs> no. There's not much else here, is there? Not really. Bush shelter in the bunker. Well, we'd have to we'd have to keep Stingray up to date with where we've moved. Yeah, well, he finds anyone. He can. He's, he's like, like the hitman, isn't he? He's almost like smoke. Yeah, he just appears, doesn't he? he out does. of the drain. Uh, uh, so we better I would move say, on. Well, Sorry. just before we do, let's yeah. just have another little talk about that. We were going through a moment in time in the industry where Sony had stood up and declared they weren't doing E3; they were going to do state of plays. And everyone was thinking, "Oh, <clears> right, <throat> oh, Sony's being very quiet. Sony's making some unusual." sort of tactical errors by delisting Drive Club, etc., etc. And then they slip out of the shadows, much like the aforementioned Stingray, and Mark Cerny just casually in an interview with Wired drops a massive PS5 bombshell. I mean, interesting way of announcing a console. Yeah, not much hype and um, hyperbole to that. There's not um, much hyperbole at all. <laughs> and you think that... I said, but the thing is... It lit the internet up, that's for sure. Did you see the retaliation, though? Microsoft straight away giving the dates and times for their um, E3 press conference. Oh, right, so we're thinking, well, <coughs> yeah. we predicted this, didn't we? It's a big show for them. The problem is, as well, PS5 has like, shown the hand, so can Microsoft maybe do you try think and one-up one up them? Do you reckon they had two specs on either side of the paper, like the... Before Sony release and after Sony release, <laughs> yeah. and the one before it was a very budget machine. It was kind of like they're all thereabouts. And yeah. then this now they've heard what Sony are doing. They're gonna blow the bloody doors off. Yeah, go with spec sheet two. Go with spec. Yeah, go, go with the one with all the latest gear in it. Mister Gates has got his wallet out. He's yeah. upgraded the Xbox experience. He's gonna give you all ten k if that's even a division thing. It's probably sixteen. Um, so. Are we done with PS5? Should we move on? Yeah, I think we better move on. Um, okay. But yeah, good, interesting news that was. So, next bit of news. Persona 5 muscles into Smash. Releasing April 18th and 17th in Europe and America, respectively, the new Smash Brothers 3.0 update brings Joker from Persona 5 and also included in this update, Stage Builder, a video editing tool and Smash World integration. Tom, you're the resident Nintendo fanboy. Um <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, well, funny, we were just talking about the PS5, uh, yeah. the way the news was announced. Uh, I was expecting this to be on a Nintendo Direct, and uh, I woke up this morning, uh, I was just watching some YouTube videos before I went to work, and uh, there it was. Um, the Persona 5 character Joker uh, trailer for Smash, and also the stage builder. Uh, he's the first DLC character for the game. Um, you can you can buy him on his own. Uh, with he comes with a, a a new map as well, or a new stage, should I say? Um, I think there's going to be four or five more DLC characters, maybe more in the future. We don't know. Um, 
so yeah, I'll be I'll be downloading that. I think for mm. uh, some multiplayer. And what do you think about friends? including a Persona character? I've not played the games. Uh, I've I've heard good things about them. Yeah, I've played. I mean, I don't, you know, they're a big dedication of time, and I've yeah, some, long games apparently, aren't they? Yeah, I put 50, some time in hours. on Vita. Oh, probably more. Yeah. Um, classic JRPG. You know, you pour hours and hours and hours and hours into these things, but the return from my experience of what I've experienced on the Vita has been very rewarding. The music, the way your relationship grows with the characters in the game, the way, you know, the story develops from there. It's a special bit of kit. I mean, 5 looks absolutely beautiful. The inclusion of him on there, it's fantastic. Um, the other thing was the stage builder looks quite cool in the way uh, I think you can go into a menu where you can view other... Um, players stages they've uploaded and then you can download them and play on them which is this great because very... that's going to be a bit it's quite mario maker you know, well right? i was going to say it sounds a little bit little big planet doesn't it yeah lots yeah. of community build going on and stuff yeah because there's some talented people out there so why play on a a, a um a stage that looks like a lego set like you've made yourself when you can go and well, on, something extra, on, on that note then let's skip to this piece of news Dreams Early Access now live Dreams Early Access has gone live for all those with an invite and Sony's currently sharing some early community creations with the game looking as interesting as ever Media Molecule has been fantastic in the past at putting together great fan supported communities and we are sure they will again so just sort of segueing off there Tom off the back of the shared uh, worlds that you can create in the new Smash uh, stage, stage builder, builder. yeah. Um, Dreams, very mysterious game. It's been in development for longer than probably even I, um, some people have been alive. Yeah, I saw a little bit of it at um, EJX Game Show at the NEC last year. Yeah. Um, How it, did it look there when you physical build? It was weird because I was seeing like lots of different games because that's the idea of it. Yeah. Um, of but yeah, from from what I saw, it looked quite impressive. Um, Your kind of thing. You're gonna get I don't that? know. I, I, it's gonna you've got to be yourself. very creative, haven't you? To it's a cool idea, but would I just end up downloading other people's creations? I, Which is not a bad thing. No, it's I mean very, very, um, almost an unlimited potential there. Some of the games that I've seen sort of showcased early on have looked absolutely incredible. Oh, didn't someone remake Dead Space with it? Well, I don't know. I saw a video that looked pretty cool. Okay. Of, uh, well, I've seen so. some like first-person shooter screens that people have made. One of yeah. them was the space-based one, and right. some other bits and bobs. And the, considering this is like a game maker, and these guys have literally lobbed these levels together in their spare time, they look incredible. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Am I? Am I? skilled enough with a dual shock controller to make something beautiful on there <laughs> no probably not do you think i could download someone else's and morph it into my perfect game for me and you maybe maybe we could get stingray to publish it it sounds like something he would use and then knock out some games <laughs> wow little did we know he had a sideline uh um one more sideline with no sideline Pre-order your discless Xbox One S. Going on pre-order today, Wednesday the 17th of April, ready for lease on May 7th. The discless Xbox One S is going on sale for $250. That's $50 cheaper than the standard One S and comes pre-installed with three games. I thought this was most generous for the price. Forza Horizon 3, Minecraft and Sea of Thieves. Yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty good deal. Straight out the gate, discless Xbox... You're going to be straight into Forza Horizon 3, which is a cracking game. Um, Minecraft's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm sure there's a lot of listeners out there that enjoy it. And then Sea of Thieves, you got that massive update last week, and all of a sudden they're just dropping it down. Yeah. I mean... It's a lot of, a lot content, of content to play, yeah? Yeah. Straight off the bat. Uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe it's them testing the water to see how well... Um, a console without a disk drive will, will sell. Um, it's going it's to be interesting. I think, I suppose, it's going to be a nice option for those that have got the internet capability to... Not inter- that you need a lot, <clears throat> really, to download a game. you just got to have the patience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing, one question I've got for you, Tom. This yes. week, while we've been locked in the bunker, down here, I've been getting frustrated over there, 
finishing off Yakuza and looking through these other games and different bits and bobs and licking the wall for dampness because it's the only way we can get liquid in here. <laughs> you were over on the green screen computer keying in things. There was smoke coming off of it. What What the hell news have you gone to find in? Uh, well, as you know, I'm a fan of Overwatch, which oh, you just love. My you love God, Overwatch. Please put me out of my misery. What is this <laughs> Overwatch news? Overwatch Storm Rises. Uh, a new PvE mode, Storm Rising, releases for P- PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, Blizzard's description of the mode states, The clock is ticking as Tracer, Genji, Winston and Mercy travel to Cuba to head off a Stormfront and chase down the Omnic Talon boss, Maximilian. In an all-new Overwatch Archives replayable mission, Storm Rising. In addition, the Archives event previous modes, Uprising and Retribution, are back for a limited time while more than 160 new cosmetics are available in total. The pair of modes, along with Storm Rising, are available until May 6th. Uh, separate to the limited time event, Overwatch is currently free to play. Hey, Big. listen up. <laughs> you could free to play. You can't Listen say up, no. Cowboy. Uh, it's free to play through April uh, through until April twenty third. The game's full roster of thirty heroes is playable. Blizzard states, and that includes the latest character Baptiste. You'll keep your progress if you then decide to purchase the full game, which is on sale for up to fifty one percent off until Monday, April twenty ninth. What country does Baptiste hail from? Um. Oh, now you put me on the spot. I Ooh. think it's um. Oh, is he Haitian? Is that the way to say it? I don't know. You, you, you're on record now. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Seeing as Tom doesn't know, we're looking for you to tell us. Tom, I think he's Haitian. Haitian. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. Let's find out. If we're wrong, or if we've missed anything, uh, and maybe there's a take on the news that we haven't even considered... Tom, how do the collective masses get to interact with us? Um, so again, it's questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com or uh, direct messages on Instagram or Twitter. Brilliant. So we now move into the meat of the podcast, the reason why everyone rocked up. It's a Star Wars special. Got some listener letters because we've reached out for the top five. We're going to do our top five, but we're also going to talk a little bit about the recently announced EA's Star Wars Fallen Order with the tagline Jedi Fallen Order Jedi Fallen Order with the tagline yes. Don't Stand Out which to me when that teaser <coughs> came last week left me thinking I didn't really have a clue what to expect or what, what a they were strange in. way of announcing yeah. the game Don't yeah. Stand Out yeah but actually it transpires you're a Jedi in the post just after the episode 3 yeah just presumably. after Order 66 is six 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 given yeah and you have the Jedi skills and you're trying to not stand out as a yeah. Jedi because that would stick you up for a killing by the Vader Meister, wouldn't it? Yeah. Stick you front and centre for a skewering on the lightsaber of justice. And he has not got any qualms, has he? Younglings, anyone? Oh, God, you know what? He isn't bothered, is he? No. He's just not bothered. Uh, as you say, younglings just... Executed for no real reason other than he got told to. Yeah. Um, so, Jedi Fallen Order, Tom, what do you know? Um, so, it's from a company, uh, obviously, well, EA uh, and Respawn, who made uh, Titanfall 1 and 2. Uh, I played the second one because it had a really good story mode, surprisingly. for an, uh, It's mainly an online shooter, but they had a really good campaign mode. The second Titanfall, that is. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, well worth a, a sort of play if anyone uh, wants well, to do uh, The voice of Optimus Prime as well. Is it Frank Cullen as well? Does oh, the... for the voice? Yeah, yeah. For, the, for the robot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the basic gist of that was you come, uh, you build up so many points in in the match when you're playing online and then you can call down a Titan and you can get in it and basically it's sort of um, that sounds cool. armoured core style Did these combat. guys have anything to do with um, what's that multiplayer online game at the moment? Um, Apex Legends? Because that's in the Titanfall universe as well, isn't it? Yeah, that small little title, Apex Legends. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, they've uh, they've been busy boys, haven't they? They've been, um, been very busy. Um, so the, oh, sorry, on. yeah, interesting they definitely know the way around a first-person shooter, but from what we hear, this is going to be a third-person uh, action-adventure game, 
So they're going to be tackling something a bit new. That's interesting. Uh, um, and it's got me intrigued because they're throwing around such words as in, inspired by Zelda and Metroid, influenced by Devil May Cry and God of War. Where where on earth is the director Stig Summerson, if that's how you pronounce it? And I'm sure... That's a good effort. I think you're right. <laughs> well, I guarantee you we've got it wrong. And I'm sure the listeners will let us know where, how and when. And they'll contact us through the medium that they full, fully know how to. Um, what do you think about him sort of citing these influences? And often directors cite influences, then you get the game that's completely different. Yeah. Uh, what are you hoping for in the fact that he says it's inspired by Zelda and Metroid? In fact, let's quote Stig here. This is a quote from him. Okay. If you look at a game like Zelda Wind Waker, as you get different abilities, each enemy is crafted in a certain way. Or even Metroid. The enemies are crafted in a certain way that once you upgrade, you can think about how you're going to approach them differently. And maybe they aren't as big as a challenge as they were at one point. Now, for me, what what I take from that is Zelda sort of unfolds in a very uh, sort of, not rigid way, but the very tra- traditional way. Traditional way. You get into a dungeon, you discover a new device. Yeah. All of a sudden, every puzzle and enemy within that dungeon utilizes this new device you've been given. Weapon, skill. We're going to extrapolate away from Zelda here, but the weapon or the skill or the device that yeah. you've been given. And then that sort of dungeon or level or next set of baddies incorporates the use of that. Yeah. That weapon. God of War did that a little bit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, yeah I think it, it's um, probably quite a common thing in a lot of game design. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, it there, there's some four great titles to be influenced by, definitely. If you're going to get influenced If you're going to mix anything. in sort of some action of Devil May Cry standards um, and, and God of War and throw in the sort of adventure of Metroid and Zelda, I think you... You're cooking up a but good recipe. Then, but then ground that with the gravitas in the environment of Star Wars. Yeah, because we've seen EA... I'll give them one thing with those Battlefront games, the recent ones. The sound effects, the audio and the visuals are pretty decent. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have I had Battlefield 1 mainly for the PSVR mission, but I ended yeah. up playing it. And 2 was out at the time, or very nearly out, I yeah. think. So games weren't as well populated as they were. But, you know, I thought the game... First of all, looked incredible, and also sounded incredible. I presume that this game's also going to be using that same dice frostbite engine that we've seen all the games. Made yeah, previously. I'd say so. Um, it'd be interesting to see how they handle the force powers and stuff. Uh, are we? Is that going to be like an upgradable skill tree? Um, that'd be quite cool. That you progress Again, through. Yeah, I and mean, the more you show. Or maybe it's going to be you can't use certain powers in certain areas because of not standing out. You need to be sort of undercover. And lo and behold, although it might go down your favourite or unfavourite street of stealth. Oh. (laughs) And we don't want to be doing that as a Jedi Knight, do we? We want to be slaying through those droids. You, we don't want to be sneaking around. No, we want this to be Jedi Power Battles style more than sneaky sneak sneak. Jedi Power Battles. Yeah. Picked a Jedi. Got some out. stories about that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if it's in the top five. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the other bits of news that we've got on the game, it's definitely a single player. Good. And <laughs> they promise, they absolutely promise. And I think they've probably <laughs> earned some credits back here because up until recently, I think they support Battlefront 2 in a good way. Yeah. Although I've heard they are going to want to start charging for that. Um, no microtransactions. No microtransactions. Yeah. I'll believe it when I say it, but well, let's not judge too quick. Let's Let's not. So, I mean, we've talked about that. We've talked about really what we want the game to be. We've kind of talked about what we hope to see in the game. What did what did you think of the trailer, by the way? Episode nine trailer. Uh, no, the Fallen Order trailer. Um, well, this is. I was wanting to get to this. Didn't look like any of it was gameplay. No, I didn't think some that. of it looked like. CGI. And considering it's out this year in November. Yeah. Oh, that's the release date, isn't it? As well. Yeah. 
uh, 15th of November. Some of it looked, in that trailer, some of it looked like CGI that was worthy of being at the beginning or end of the game. Yeah. Other parts looked like possibly in-game engine scenes, but you couldn't really tell. And if they were, they looked a bit shaky compared to the rest of the game. I think if you pull that trailer apart, there's parts that stand up and you can think, yes, that's CGI. There's other parts that don't stand up. It's a very... I uneven think some, trailer I think for a game I think sometimes it'd be better if companies were a bit more honest and uh, j- just threw out the gameplay trailer maybe just yeah because it, it gets people's expectations that. way too high sometimes when they show a trailer like that and then they like let's say at E3 they show a, hopefully show some gameplay yeah people might be like oh well that doesn't look like the the classic where's the puddles gone <laughs> yeah you know um I, I just, I just, we need another update on that game. They've given us some little nuggets that yeah. we've been able to look at and observe and think about, and how these sort of things would play out within the game. What we need now, and hopefully, you three will give us this, is a full on, like you say, not massive, because I think sometimes games like this, there might be a little bit limited in campaign, so you don't want to see too much at E3, but yeah. maybe a walk around of a spaceport, little interaction voiced over in that cyberpunk style when they released cyberpunk they could have we don't need 45 minutes of gameplay of this game but if we had five just showing his force powers interacting looking at some stormtroopers i think that would be plenty and it would it would then allow us to put some meat on the bone of this trailer which you know us being skeptical gamers you got to wonder if it's the whole this is not gameplay footage in brackets at the bottom right corner yeah you know it It'd be interesting when they said they're influenced by God of War and Death of My Cry, if they go with more modern God of War, where it's quite story driven, really. But if you look that, at if you look at Death of May Cry it. and the old God of Wars, they're very action driven, quite linear experiences. So very much. I wonder which one we're going to get. I think that if he's starting God of War of an influence, he, he would have to be me the latest one. The latest you'd one think, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah, for sure. So we've sat down and thought about this Star Wars game that's coming out this year. And we've decided to have a little think about our top five Star Wars games. Um, yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about what makes those great. Uh, and I wonder what they could possibly incorporate into the new game. But on that note, Tom, we reached out in the social media world and we got some guys. They got in touch. And you can too. Find us on Twitter or Instagram or send us an email at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Um, first listener letter. So this is uh, Odd as UK over on Instagram. So if you search for that, you'll find this kind young gentleman. Now he lists his top five. Now we've had loads of top fives in here. I don't know whether one is the top, five is the bottom, or whatever. I've just put them down in the order that we were sent them. So Odd as UK has come in with number one, Jedi Knight Dark Forces. Number two. Super Return of the Jedi, number three, Knights of the Old Republic, number four, Shadows of the Empire, number five, Episode One Racer. Pick any out of there that you particularly remember fondly? Um, Knights of the Old Republic, obviously, which we'll get to. Yeah, um, that's featured on nearly everybody. Yeah, fair an Episode One Racer. Episode uh, Shadows one of the Racer. Empire, I think, was on the N64, wasn't it? It was. I never it played it. It's meant to be good, though. Game. Yeah, it was, I think from memory, I think I had it back in the day. I've not played it since, and it's one of those games that we talked about in the top ten where you probably don't ever want to revisit it because it's more than likely going to be nothing like you remember. But I remember that being... I mean, at the time, the graphics looked incredible. I shouldn't think they do anymore. No. Uh, you, you played like a, a guy who had like a mini Millennium Falcon. There were some shooting yeah. levels. There were some very weird sort of... Um, third person levels that were quite clunky to control even back in the day so I should think those feel really horrible now with a worn N64 analogue stick um, we've also got uh, we had another friend reach out to us uh, one of our in the community out there and this guy's called my PS2 library again he got in touch over on Instagram a lot of love over on the Instagram page his top five, Star Wars Obi-Wan, which I believe was an Xbox game. I remember playing that and it being quite a cool title. Number four, The Immortal Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. 
Number three, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Now, I think you played that, didn't you, Tom, back in the day on PS2? Um, I probably played a demo of it. It's the one with Django Fett. Django I, I think Fett. it is, anyway, yeah. Yeah, I remember that being quite a cool game. I do remember yeah. it getting reviewed quite favourably. Maybe we ought to dig it out. Yeah. Dig it out of the vault. Another one for the pit. Two, Star Wars Empire at War. Now... If my memory serves correct... That is a real-time strategy, It is a real-time And I'm a big strategy. fan of those, but I've not played it. I tell you what, if you've got an old PC, it will probably Fire run it up. Empire As will run it, won't it? Oh, the green screen? Absolutely yeah. it will. <laughs> uh, it's compatible with everything. That's what Stingray tells us anyway. Uh, Empire at War. I mean, if it's the one I'm thinking of, the tutorial level was actually you as an Imperial commander landing down on Tatooine and sending out troops to investigate first the escape pod then the footprints from it, and you kind of, as you got to different sections, you kind of got given another unit as part of the tutorial. So as you learn, it grew, but you sort of grew through the start of the New Hope story of the droids escaping the ship. Yeah. Uh, I've always got fond memories of that. I played it yeah. when I was working away uh, back in the dim and distant past, and uh, me and a few friends just couldn't get enough of that. And their number one game, Star Wars Battlefront. Though PS2 library... He wants a couple of honourable mentions. Now, he's put down Revenge Racer, <laughs> which I believe is the Pod Racer redo on uh, PS2, if you remember that. Yep. I think he had a yellow case. Okay. And he's, 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 he's dropped <laughs> the nuclear bombshell of Masters of Terras Cassie. Uh, I'm glad you pronounced that one, not me. I might have got it wrong. <laughs> I think that's that I've recently seen right. Solo, and I think she uses Terras Cassie to take a guy down. Um, but that's the PS1 fighter from memory. Yeah, it's uh, like a Street Fighter Tekken style beat 'em up. I don't think that the listeners would take very kindly to you grouping Masters of Terrence <laughs> Cassie in the same in the same ballpark as those two mastodons of the fighting genre. Uh, I've never played it myself, but everyone I've ever mentioned it to before has said just just no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure if we looked it up on YouTube me and you would be scooping our jaws up off the floor and not in a good way um, moving swiftly on to the next listener letter it's Gaz Loves Games over on Insta but please check out his YouTube channel as well uh, the he, guy, got, uh, he, he did a video for us didn't he to reply he did uh, a video, a video reply, reply yeah and you mentioned cool looking Guns N' Roses t-shirt yeah Gaz good has man. got it going on and his choice of Star Wars is equally as awesome if you've seen his video, brilliant. If not, here it is again. Uh, in at five, he's got Star Wars Pod Racer on the N64, and he cites that for combining his love of Star Wars with racing games. Number four, Rogue Squadron, way ahead of its time for its realistic 3D world and experience he claims he will never forget. So, you know, I birth think of his child, talk. marriage. I'm assuming he's got children he's married, I don't know. Third, Rogue Squadron. Get in line, you know. <laughs> Number three, he, he's, he's calling for Force Unleashed. But Wii then, version. Curveball, the Wii version, for its compelling use of motion control. To be that's fair, a, yeah. I bet that's quite cool. It's not one yeah. I've looked out. The, I've got a guilty confession. The only place I've played Force Unleashed is on the PSP. And my God, it was the stinkiest mess that I've ever had the misfortune of playing. I thought, I was, I thought it was all right. I played I on the that. PSP. Yeah, it's probably not the best. It's not aged well. Yeah. Uh, in at number two, he's got Super Star Wars on the SNES. And he says here, hard as nails. <laughs> I have to agree, it is a tough game. Even back in the day when I was sort of battle-hardened on platformers, it's it was tough then. And it's tough even now for an older guy who's got soft on auto saves. And number one, We've already mentioned it once, but he's talking about Battlefront 2, the new one. Immersive, top-notch gameplay and levelling up done right. He applauds EA for supporting this game and the turnaround that they performed. Yeah, fair play, I think. Um... Fair play to Gaz Loves Games over on Insta and YouTube. Uh, so, Tom, before we do a few more listeners' letters, let's go in with number five. Now, we've just mentioned it there. So this is our number five. This is our number five. And it's um, Super Star Wars Ooh. on the SNES. Yes. Also available on Vita with crossplay. Didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so you can, I think, get it on PS4. I've got right. it on Vita, but I think that you does can, actually... Can I get it on my PS4 as well? I think you can, yeah. Uh-huh. 
Oh, he says. Then. Does it have saves? Because oh, that would make it an easier I game. I can't remember, actually. I remember picking it up and playing it on the video and just thinking, oh, God, it's just a wall of pain. I've so I, I originally got this game. Um, my nan and granddad got me and my brother a SNES from a car boot sale with loads of games, massive box of games. Wow. We, we loved it. Yeah. It was great. Um, and uh, Super Star Wars is on there. And we thought, let's try this. Yeah. And did not get very far, uh, but slowly learned some of the levels. And we just had one of those random days where we got quite far and got, I think, to Tatooine, which was far for us. They're the best days, though, aren't they? Those days where you're <laughs> Where you just the absolutely world. destroy the game and you're like, <laughs> we're, do- we're going to do it all the way to the end, going to finish it. And then you just die to some like one jower. The, the younger one gets uh, sent off to the kitchen to get snacks. Yeah, get the supplies. We're going. Deep Two further later. into the game. <laughs> Two minutes later, back to the start. <laughs> oh, in fact, our SNES used to have a slightly dodgy um, uh, adapter. So you plug it in, but every so often, like if, if one of you caught the cupboard wrong or whatever, it, it would turn the console off and reset it. So there was many rage moments with the, the SNES and Super Star Wars. Wow, okay. Well, let's so look, that's my let's, uh, little let's, memories of it. Um, <laughs> let's top that off with some factoids. It was launched in 1992 and developed by LucasArts. Uh, it's obviously a game based on the 1977 film Star Wars, and it's the SNES equivalent of the Super Star of the Star Wars NES game. Uh, Super Star Wars features mostly run and gun gameplay, although it had some change, some features, some challenging features on new levels, such as the land speeder or piloting an X-wing. And now that was using the Mode Seven. Now, when that game first came out, you got it in a box of a pile of games. Yeah, I rocked up with money saved that I'd fastidiously saved away, and I bought this because I was a Star Wars kid, not the Star Wars kid, but I was a Star Wars kid. Yeah, and I wanted this game. I'd seen it in all the play magazines and all those magazines that were the SNES mags back in the day and the adverts, and I was, I was hyped. I also believe I think <clears throat> I saw footage of it on Bad Influence, if you remember the ITV show. And listeners, if you do. Get in contact. Bad Influence, what a great show. Uh, was this before Games Master? Bad Influence. They came around. They came out around the same time. I would be Violet Berlin to your Andy Crane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you better Google that. It's I will. A compliment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so those and, the, and those levels where you flew into the screen and the land speeder. Um, I mean, they look a bit hokey cokey now, but at the time, I, I mean, remember I, them hurting my eyes quite a lot. I felt the, like I was yeah. in the film; it was incredible. The way the animation scaled the baddies in and out, the baddies, yeah. the enemies in and out, it was absolutely incredible. Um, obviously, this game spawned some sequels. One of them has been mentioned by one of our fans: Super Star Wars: Empire Strikes Back and Super Star Wars: Return of the Jedi, '93 and '94, respectively. Um, I mean, pixel art looking really great. Uh, I think that's why it's aged so well because it was done in a style that's just still suitable to this day, and the the audio using the SNES sound chip was absolutely on point. It was. It, I know it wasn't a full John Williams recreation, but considering the other video game music that we'd heard, when that starts, and it, I think it does it in stereo sound as well, so it does all that nice preamble even yeah. into it. It's just got some punch to it, and the, the SNES is really working its socks off at that moment in time so that was our number five super star wars on the snes but to all you modern gamers out there you can hook yourself up with it instantaneously on vita or ps4 um next we'll do one more and then dive back in for some listener letters rogue squadron launched in 1998 now i didn't know this it came out on n64 and pc but it came to the pc first this has always been synonymous for me for being an N64 game. Yeah. Uh, launched oh, in 1990. Me and you both. Now, apparently, <clears throat> it was an exclusive, but it had already come out at that point in time on the PC. And what Nintendo and LucasArts agreed between them, between them would be a three-game deal off the back of that. So it was launched in 1998 in North America, so it was a Christmas game for them. And bizarrely, it limped into Europe in 1999 in January. A very strange place for it to find itself. But you've got Christmas money from Grandma. Happy days. Um, (laughs) 
Now, this, <laughs> this game... You know me too well. I know you too well. This game was developed by LucasArts, but it was obviously more famously produced by Factor 5, who we know for producing the game that broke my spine in the pit, Lair, uh, which, yep. you know... It's now in a layer of its own. It's in a layer of its own. It's not aged well. Where are Factor 5 now, I hear you say? Now, I was shocked to hear this, but they now make the interaction menu for Netflix. So when you oh. go in and you try and go through the menu and it's all laggy, that's basically layer technology pointed straight <laughs> into the Netflix app. You want the layer effect? You've got it. Um... Rogue Squadron, fantastic game, and it also utilised the expansion pack, increasing the game's ah, resolution. The, the Did you? Ex- I had an expansion pack, yeah. So you popped I had a third party one as well. You popped and dropped, but you did a third party one. Yeah. Now, I found out something about the N64 expansion pack the other day that blew my mind. Did you know that that basically just is a switch? The technology was already in the N64, and the jumper pack in it turns the switch off. And when you take out, you know that one that says, you know, yeah. do not remove. Yeah. And then you, you get the little toothpick and you pop it out and you yeah. put in the red topped one or whatever yours was probably purple with some <laughs> lights on it. And unofficial and turbo control and turbo <laughs> buttons. Yeah. Giving it the full graphical enhancement. Uh, that was basically just it routed through another circuit board. So it basically the N64 launched. We talk about DLC being on disc now and us being disappointed. <laughs> How disappointing is it to get a console with DLC, DLC built uh, into it? Yeah, it's with already DLC there hardwire. The go, damn it! Uh, so we think we're hard done to now, gamers. You don't know a thing. I remember paying seventy pound for a game back in the day. We've been there. We'll, we'll go there again, I'm sure. Uh, now another little factoid that I I found out from this: the sound effects actually got lifted off a of VHS of Star Wars. Really? <laughs> I must admit, back in the day, they sounded yeah. Literally, just like the music the video. was on point. Yeah. I mean, the the swoosh noises in the menu. I always remember being cool. Uh, the voice acting, the sounds of the X foils opening and closing, and all. I'm pretty sure there was an unlockable Naboo Starfighter as well. You're absolutely right. There was. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There was putting some hours to get that bad boy as well, and I'm getting myself hyped for episode one. But we all know what happened there. Nothing wrong with episode one. <sighs> The problem starts episode two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't like sand. We, we, are you coming on to me? <laughs> Tom, <laughs> you've waited all these years. You can launch into me with a line like that. It gets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Shocking, right? Shocking. Well, just to clean the air up a little bit, de-sand ourselves... <laughs> The mum's going to stand us on a towel and flick our feet with a sock just to make sure that we're all <laughs> sand-free and ready for the <laughs> listeners' letters. Uh, it's much more over on Insta and YouTube. He cites his top five, and now he's obviously listed them one to five. Now, I don't know whether that's he likes this first one the best or the Let's last one the best. That. We'll, we'll go with that. So he's number one, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. Now... That, I believe, is the one that also came to 32X. It's the sort of vector-shaped flying game. Um, it's got a lot of Akbar in it. Sighting would, but would that be the one I've seen in arcades where you have like a almost like a cockpit around you? Like the yeah, cabinet but, uh, The cabinet has a joystick. Yeah, now my childhood brain might be playing tricks on me, but there's also one, I believe, where you end up dueling uh, <laughs> with Vader and Luke. I think I have, yeah, um, I that one as well. Good pick. Good, good, good answer. Yep. Whether he's playing that on 32X or in the arcade, I don't know. But it's much more fantastic. Now, it's much more also have a YouTube channel, which we implore you to check out. This is absolutely fantastic. Their second pick, Super Star Wars. We've talked about that. We like yep. that. General thumbs up from the uh, unofficial controller podcast. Number three, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back on the Amstrad CPC 464. I mean, that is a left field choice if ever I've heard one, but fair play, I'm sure there's some nostalgia there, and we always say with these lists, it's not about a quality title, it's more about a quality moment in time, and I'm sure that uh, It's Much More has got those for The Empire Strikes Back on the Amstrad CPC 464. Um, Number four, Star Wars Battlefront on the OG Xbox, as we call it here, not the Xbox One, because that's all very confusing now, but the OG Xbox. Yeah, I played quite a bit of that with my brother doing the split screen, it's good. 
back in the day before yeah. the internet reached out to the villages. Yeah. And how did that play out for you and him on there? Oh, it's ace. So like you're getting your little um, sort of troop carrier ship and then you could land on a bigger ship and like wow. invade that ship. That's pretty cool. Uh, and like try and overthrow so, it. So, you know, I, I do believe I played it back in the day. I don't know if it was on original Xbox or whether it was on um, PS2. I can't remember. Uh, and then number five, Star Wars Episode One Racer. He's 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 citing the Dreamcast version, which I believe was like an up, upgraded version. upgraded version, expansion yeah. pack plus plus. What we're doing here is if this if if Star Wars Episode One Racer came out on the Mega Drive, if you flip the lights off, did the graphic enhancer, <laughs> it'd be the Dreamcast edition. Okay, it's that good. Uh, Star Wars Episode One Racer on the Dreamcast. I've got that. Um, it's a great game. I loved it on N64. Um, yeah, no spoilers, but we're going to get to that. Um, just fantastic looking, and I do believe the unlock for that was when you finished it. I do remember getting this on the N64, though hazy memory creeps in. You actually got the film replica unlock of Boon to Eve because oh. the first level on the N64 is actually very short. Yeah, but when you finish the whole game, you get the full unabridged Boon to Eve classic. Chris McClum. I'm going to spell that C-H-R-S-M-C-C-L-M. His name's Chris. He's over on Instagram. And that's his, uh, that's his Insta ID, C-H-R-S-M-C-C-L-M. He got in contact. Now, we're seeing a lot of the same names and games here. That doesn't discredit any of these, but uh, it's certainly keying us in to what people see as the standout titles. Yeah. He's got Super Star Wars on the SNES at number five. Mm -hmm. Star Wars Trilogy Arcade at number four. Star Wars Arcade 1983. Episode 1 Racer on the N64 is his number 2. And number 1, he's got Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader on the GameCube. Now, he does throw in one, <coughs> one little parenthesis here. He knows, he knows that there's no knights, but he says he prefers arcade titles. Fair play? Mm, yeah. What do you think about... now? I've never had the fortune of playing Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader on the GameCube, Tom, but I know you're a big fan. Yeah, I got that um, as one of my launch titles when I got the GameCube. and wow, was that's uh, a bloody good launch title. The GameCube had some quality launch titles, really. Yeah. Uh, that being one of them. Um, I was wowed by the like movie, almost movie effect graphics at the time. Do you know what? I, re- I remember... In, it seemed like it seemed to have millions of stars when you were doing the space levels. Um, that, that's the thing I remember when the GameCube was launched. Really impressive. Um, I went on like a, an IGN site, the IGN site as it was back in the day, and there was a, a tiny two inch by two inch video on the early <laughs> internet yeah. of this. I saw this. I saw that running and didn't think it possible. Did you just think you were watching a I clip like- of the? Death genuinely couldn't believe that they'd actually got graphics to that level yeah. and I think that game still stands up now yeah really good game um, is that the one where you got out and got no that vehicles? was the third one so this um, is the sequel to the N64 game it is yeah, yeah. Uh, made by the same people again um, before they slip into the pit <laughs> yeah um, much of the same really uh, as uh, Rogue Squadron on N64 um, but yeah Good okay. choices, good. And let's do uh, one more of ours. So number three, we've talked a little bit about it, but now we're going to go into it. Episode one pod racer for the N64 and Dreamcast. Now that launched on the N64 in 1999 and was developed by LucasArts. A tie into the movie, obviously, and uh, one of the standout scenes from the film, the <coughs> pod racing scene. Yeah. Some detractors of the pod race of the of episode one would say that's the best bit of the film. I think I beat you to it. That's about exactly what you were going to say. Mm-hmm. And this, this game captured the feeling of being there. But what's, do you have any memories of it on the N64, Tom? Did you have that? Or were you yeah, PS1 I got that. Um, utilising the expansion pack. As I've now learned, it's just a switch inside the machine. Gutted about Gutted, that. Gutted, yeah. I honestly um, thought that thing was doing something really special. Bizarrely, I always remember the the box art for Episode 1 Racer. It had a real, like, almost like a matte black finish on the it box. Did. I just remember yeah. it being real cool looking. Well, they tied that into a... The, the, it was just a normal N64 console, but they did a box tie-in where they did the box of the N64 had a slip sleeve yeah. with the black 
incorporating that whole look and style that you've just talked about, and it looked well. On point. The thing is, a slight Phantom Menace, but. Back in the day, I could not get enough of it, and I wanted a Star you, Wars you game only, on the N64 only, as as bad as anything. You only started saying things bad about Episode One when the bigger boys <laughs> told when you the it bigger wasn't boys cool. came so round. The bigger boys came round. They started ruining three stuff. What's this Jar Jar doll? Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, it's not mine. It's my little brother's. You slept with it on a <laughs> nightly basis. Slept with this plush. <laughs> And then the bigger boys come round and you're like, oh, let's burn it. You know, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> at night time. Sobbing his eyes out. I'll let you listeners decide whether that's a true story or not. <laughs> I'm an episode one fan. Well, um, I mean, yeah. compared to the originals, they're not that great. But out of all the three prequels, you know, episode one, surely he's got to be the one. <sighs> the other two, just, oh my God. So yeah, getting back to it, I was desperate for a Star Wars game. I yeah. wasn't really into racing games, but I thought, well, this is pod racing. I'll give that a whirl. And loved it, I yeah. love... Did you realise... So this is pod racing. <laughs> that was me. That, that was, was me you. with the, the analogue stick on the N64 controller. Yeah, I'll do a move. We'll spin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with uh, my brother playing Sebulba in the background, shouting at me, trying to knock me off the chair. <laughs> Bringing in the ashes of your burnt <laughs> Jar Jar plush. <laughs> Okay, so um, <laughs> should we go to should we do some more listener letters, or do you want to finish off the list? What do you want to do? Um, let's finish off the listener letters. Okay, so we've got a couple more. Yeah, we have. We've got three more. We've Two got more. Um, we've got kvn dot edmn. Where, over, where, where's uh, he joining? Uh, us? He's uh, joining us in a uh, Instagram far, far away. Ah. Um, oh, like, oh, very themed. Yes. Little do they know that we're sat here in our brown... Very Alan Partridge. Yeah, br- <laughs> brown robes. We've got little tuck-away lightsabers. We've he got- mocks this Jar Jar plush, but he's secretly got a couple like that. Oh, I, I sleep with one and I keep one in its box perfectly. In a, like a vacuum sealed <laughs> In a dark room, so there's no sun fade. For the Antiques Road show in 20 no, years' time. No, just in, if I ever have a really bad day, I know there's one day I can come home, bust that bag open, crack yeah. out a factory fresh jar jar, cuddle him, sniff him, smell him. <laughs> you know, 1999, just wrapped up in a vacuum-packed little bubble to enjoy you whenever I want. So kvn.edm, over on Instagram, let's just for the ease of use for this next 30 seconds, refer to kvn as Kevin. Yeah. What's Kevin's number one? Uh, Star Wars Battlefront on the PS2 this time. What's his number two? Uh, His number two is Star Wars Battlefront 1 on PS2. He loves himself some Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, Number three is Star Wars Force Unleashed um, again. Number four, Knights of the Old Republic. And number five, Knights of the Old Republic 2. Some great meaty uh, RPGs there. Yeah, big time. Uh, Also, Living in Bits over on Instagram got in touch with us, and he cited his number five as Super Star Wars, number four, Knights of the Old Republic, number two. Let's take a moment to talk about this, because I've played it, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you have. Lego Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I think I've played played that through. It's, it's quite good. Fun game. Good, yeah, fun game. It's um, catch co-op as well, so you can just drop and in and out. If, if memory serves... And when that came out, I think there weren't any other there weren't any other Lego branded. There were obviously Lego um, Racer games and all that sort yeah, of stuff, but there weren't any. I think that was the first. Uh, the formula that we now know, twenty years on, tried and tested, yeah. it's not changed one bit, has it? Really, basically, yeah. if you play Lego Star Wars, you've played. You played Lego, Lego Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You've played them all. I, I I'll check the files, but I don't think I've played that. Is that another one of the the dark web games? It is, yeah. Stingray Selection. Wow, okay. Bumper pack. <laughs> Published by Stingray. His number two is Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's also getting a lot of love. And number one, he's got Force, Force Unleashed. Unleashed. Now, we've got another listener letter here from ozcat.tv over on Instagram. That's ozcat.tv. <coughs> I don't know if we're pronouncing these right. I'm sure, listeners, you'll cue us into this. Like we've always said, we're simple guys that probably need phonetic spelling so we don't mispronounce <laughs> anything. I mean, 
Tom's claiming Baptiste is Haitian. I mean, <laughs> where even is that? Uh, so Oscat. Is that right? Let's not even go there. What, what do I know? What do we know? What do we know? Oscat.tv over on Instagram. Uh, he's got uh, number five, Pod Racer N64. He's given some little nuggets here. He says it's a great racer. Number four is picked Soul Calibur. Uh, has the unlockable Yoda, who is super uh, super overpowered. OP. And he's, OP. Granddad. Yeah, sorry. I, I mean, I don't know what I'm saying. What I was trying to do is make sure everyone was included. So at least, True, yeah. You know, now when we say OP... Now I can forever now refer to it as OP, and anyone who got on board from here on inwards knows it's going to be overpowered. I've been schooled. Uh, so we'll start that again. It had the unlock of Yoda, who was super OP'd, and his friends banned Ozcat from using him as he was too much like odd jopping golden high <laughs> due to his height. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, we and, and do you know what? It's these little nuggets that really bring these selections alive, isn't it? It's yeah. like the talk of the Super Star Wars and the Dodgy Wire. It's these moments in time that we remember. So to think of Ozcat being banned from Soul Calibur <laughs> for using Yoda because he's too small and they can't get a decent hit on him is fantastic. He's number three, Lego Star Wars 3. A lot of fun and his favourite Lego game. Number two, original Battlefront 2. He just puts one word, marvellous, eloquent. Uh, And number one, KOTOR 2, which Knights of the Old Republic Republic 2. He's too cool for school, he calls it KOTOR. He says that's an absolute masterpiece. To be fair, he summed that up very eloquently as well with two words. Is an absolute masterpiece. But Tom, one thing I'm going to say. Much like Highlander, there can be only one submission of the week. Who is it? And that's uh, Get Switched On. And they're over on uh, Instagram. Everyone's got in contact over on Instagram this time. Yeah. And that's Get underscore Switched underscore On. On. And we can find him on Instagram. We can. I wonder what he's a fan of. I think he's a bit of a fan of Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, so his choices, starting with number five, Shadows of the Empire on the N64 again. We've talked about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Super Star Wars at number four again on yeah. the SNES. Uh, number three, Star Wars Bounty Hunter on the GameCube. Yeah. Um, second mention for that. Yeah. Number two, Rogue Squadron 2 on the GameCube, Rogue Leader. Yeah. Um, and number one, Knights of the Old Republic on Xbox, which is what I played it on as oh, well. Oh, okay. Um, and he says, uh, good luck, guys, with the podcast, and he's looking forward to listening in. So if oh. you're listening, uh, thanks for your input. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Well, thank you to, let's just say thank you to all of the listeners that have got involved this week. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's great our, to have some feedback. Yeah, and our lonely time, our lonely, lonely time here yeah. in, the, in, this, in this bunker that we've decided to secrete <clears> ourselves away in. Uh, I believe we need to finish our list as well. Well, Tom, hit me up. What's next? <clears throat> Number two, we've uh, got Knights of the Old Republic, Xbox and PC, launched in 2003, and it was developed by LucasArts and BioWare. Wow. Where are they now? Well, where are they now? Not making very much good stuff, are they? They've been absorbed by the mighty EA, and they've been just locked in a room. So that game. We set... hope they get back to some Mass Effect If only goodness, they could be so... allowed. Uh Set 3,956 years before New Hope. Now, that's bold, isn't it? From the get-go. Yeah. That's like, let's take everything you know about Star Wars and put you 4,000 years before. Like, like now, that'd be set in a game in Egyptian times. Yeah. It's bold. It's an uh, interesting choice. Um, so, learning the Force Power Battle Meditation uh plays in it's t- I forgot his turn base. Yeah it is. Of course yeah. it is. And that's that battle meditation I think is the implementation the way that's implemented into the game. Because it was like you 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 select your inputs that you wanted to put in. Because <clears throat> it's not turn based in the traditional way that you would say a JRPG is turn based. Yeah. It's more of like a, a more modern JRPG where it's like action turn based, isn't it? Yeah. It behind the scenes in Knights of the Old Republic there's a lot of dice rolling going on, isn't there, mm-hmm. I think. And uh yeah, because um, I, I do believe you didn't start even with a lightsaber. You start with something like a vibro blade, and you build up to yes. a lightsaber. Yeah, something similar. Like, yeah. It's like a samurai sword type yeah. S weapon. Um, but very Mass Effect vibes in that game. Yeah, definitely. Recruiting the crew. Exactly. Um, the, uh, which Evan uh, Hawke, as yeah. it's known. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is a great 
it, yeah, I think you can see a lot of Mass Effect. Well, you can see a lot of Knights of the Old Republic in Mass Effect One. That's the correct way of wording it. Yeah, yeah. You don't see got it the of, right way around. Yeah, you've got it the right way around. I was making all the mistakes. <clears throat> you were making all the good moves. I remember the uh, utility droid as well, T three uh, M four. Yeah. Um, and the Mandalorian mercenary, who I think was based a little bit on Han Solo, just a little bit. Candrus <laughs> uh, Ordo. I hope we've got I, that. I mean, right. I remember I had that game on the original Xbox. I'd obviously seen previews of it. I was excited for it to come out when I finally got my mitts on it. Um, the depth of the law, considering yeah. it was set four thousand years before the scale, <coughs> the twist the, at the, the end, the twist, the scale of it all. It wasn't just like a one and done game. It was a big. It was a big meaty title. Yeah. And there was lots of things to discover. There were lots of little nods in there. Um, and it was it was great to be in the Star Wars universe, but so well clear of the films and and credence to the Star Wars universe that it could support a title set four thousand years before its main main film that everybody knows and loves and, and intimately knows. Uh, again, props to George Lucas really for building such a great sandbox for these people to build a game in. Um, Darth uh, Darth Malak was the main villain, but there's some twisty stuff going on at the end. So, again, spoilers for a thirty year old game. Probably <laughs> we don't want to be guilty of those, do we? No, I mean, I we'll leave that one. We'll let you week. enjoy it and exactly. go and play it. And let's just before we do our number one. Uh, <clears throat> We've got honorable some honourable mention. mentions. Yeah. Yeah. Dark Forces on the PS1 and PC. Um, was that the shoot, first person shooter? It was basically a Doom yes, engine it was, playing yeah. with, with nice uh, Star Wars sound effects. It, for the time, it was what we needed. It's probably a game I've put more hours into than I should have done. But uh, it was there, it was available, it was fun to play. It, it was easy to play. I'm going to throw uh, Jedi Power Battles in there as well. Good game. Uh, Played that on my brother's PS1 a lot. Another title where you could do sort of two-player. I think yeah. I remember probably having a sick Definitely. day from school and getting to Darth Maul and then... Oh, really? And, and, and getting slain at right near the end, yet again. I nearly actually picked it up. Always way. so near, yet so far away. I wonder if that's held up well. I might check Probably not. It plays that. well. Uh, and it, bizarrely, you, you were playing as some... You could play as Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. Uh, but there was a couple of other uh, lesser-known characters in there. The, what, the the Jedi we refer to as Uncle Albert. <laughs> really, <laughs> Uncle Albert, yeah. Yeah, with a really tall head and the um, yeah. the white beard. Yeah. I don't know what his name is, really. Kiadai Mundi, I think. <laughs> but I'm sure some fans are definitely going to uh, slay me for pronounce that yeah. one wrong. Yeah, well, hopefully next week... Uncle Albert yeah, we'll is call him henceforth Uncle Albert. known as yeah, henceforth Uncle Albert. known as Uncle Albert to all fans of the Unofficial Controller podcast. There he is, Uncle Albert. Uh <laughs> We didn't obviously know, other than Santa Claus, we didn't know any other white-bearded men as children, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you you throw that one in there. Uh, Star Wars Arcade 32X for the arcade and the 32X. Uh, Shadows of the Empire on the N64. We've mentioned Rogue Leader on the GameCube. Anything else we've missed? Um, no, I don't think so. There was one game, I've been trying to think about this, I th- I think it was Star Wars Republic Commando. It was a team-based yeah. tactical shooter where you were clone I heard a lot troopers, of good things. but yeah. early clone troopers. So you were like a special unit version of them, weren't you? I often get the box art for this confused with that bounty hunter game we mentioned earlier yeah. because the Mandalorian armour. Look, I was going full geek. Let me push the gas- glasses up on my nose. The Mandalorian <laughs> armour and the clone, the clone, the original clone trooper outfit are very similar because they're kind of inspired yeah. by each other or the clone troopers inspired by the Mandalorian armour so I always in my mind get them confused but I played it on original Xbox when it first came out I've not looked at it since <clears throat> but I've you know I remember thoroughly enjoying that game it was a combination it was like a real time full spectrum warrior so you would like move up and you would say move forward and then you had a technical guy you could like blow that door then you would move in and take the guys down I remember it being pretty cool uh, anything else that you might want to mention on the honourable mentions of mentions list no, I don't think so. I think we've covered, along with the the listeners' uh, feedback, I think we've covered a lot of the top Star Wars games. So. And if 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 EA and Stig could bring all that together into Fallen Order, we're either going to have 
a I've proper mumble a mess. of the title or a quality game. Yeah, I, I don't know which yet. Well, we'll be excited to see come November what that turns out to be. Uh, so, uh, number one, X-Wing on PC, uh, developed by LucasArts, came out in 1993. It was a PC-based flight sim, made great use of the graphics at the time. Um, let me let me cut in here, because it's me that's forced to yeah, on the list, isn't it? Yeah, you have. Like, like, a, like an out-of-control truck, I had yeah. to see X-Wing on this list. <laughs> now, uh, I never had a PC at this time. But a lot of my friends did have the 486 and the 386. So anyone who was around at school in 1993, 486, 386 and 286, they mean things to people. Uh, now, we, a lot of my friends had this game and one of them brought it into school. And we had this pretty cool... Educational? Teacher, yeah, at the time, who allowed us some time during break in the form room to utilise the PC. This sounds like an episode of Stranger Things. It's, it's good times it's, it, it, it probably sounds way better than it was it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we were allowed to use this PC he let us extra special credits to use this machine and uh-huh. uh, this, this friend of mine Gary he brought in X-Wing uh, and from the moment it started up I've never seen anything like this at the time I had Atari yeah. ST so the PC was like a, a like a light leap a leap ahead of anything that was on there and the the hand drawn graphics for the people in from the films in the great in the game that were animated, it just looked incredible. Flying around the ships, it looked amazing. It looked like nothing else that we'd seen. It was we've talked before in the previous episodes about the, the simulator games that are out yeah. around the time. So it's, would you say it's very different to like Rogue Squadron then? I, I wouldn't say it was like a. I don't remember it being. Super was there no other view other than the cockpit view? There was a cockpit view. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, it was the, it was in the <clears> days of like function keys doing all the different views. And I'm sure there right, was a okay. chase view and other yeah. bits and bobs. But we were hooked in for playing this in like the main view. Like you were actually in the cockpit. With yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. And that's what we wanted. Um, now, a little bit of an honourable mention, but I'm sure it all gets muddied into one memory. There was a sequel to the game um, called Tie Fighter, which I think we also played. That I remember more fondly because. Everyone had played in an X-Wing before. Everyone had played at the Rebels in games before. When everyone yeah. watched Star Wars, you wanted to be the Rebels. But I always had a soft spot for the Empire. The tech. For the baddies. The, the, the bad guys. The baddies, Dad. The, 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 the whole of that was what I was more into. The, the, the destroyers, the military, the, the Star Destroyers, the military, all that good stuff. So when TIE Fighter came out, and you could do like secret missions for Emperor Palpatine, and you, you, you know... You you saw all these guys on the on the Star Destroyer bridge telling you what to do. It's a fantastic game. Again, this is in no particular order, and again, it's it's a lot for us about moments in time, as it is a game being a standout, absolute, you know. Yeah, breaker. some of them are probably not aged well, others have. Um, yeah, and I, I, I've heard people have remade X Wing, or people have got patches for it, and they've like improved the graphical fidelity. I'm sure it looks great. I mean, I hope after we've. Um, We've done these lists and some of the listeners' lists. That uh, some of you maybe check these titles out. If you, Definitely, if, uh, if you can get access to some of these games, and obviously we talked about the Super Star Wars being available on some of the modern machines, you've definitely got to look that. Out. I'm going to be checking that out. I didn't realise. Um, so well, I will, uh, you, see remember, can... you remember the pain associated with it back in the day? Yeah. Imagine that would diminish skills now. Diminished. Not that yours are diminished. Yeah. But, you know, yours have probably got better over time. Mine have got worse. <laughs> Uh, I think that wraps up the the Star Wars section. We weren't, you know, too yeah. full cheese. Uh, quick thoughts on the film trailer. The laugh. I mean, yeah. What does that mean? And that that at the end uh, of the trailer, <clears throat> at the same time as the laugh, we see that sort of broken piece of Death Star that they're looking at. Yeah, that's the for me. That's the most exciting part. Of the I whole definitely trailer. don't think he's gonna be this getting up out of that wreckage going I'm okay what what unlike Last Jedi he's not just going to rub a bit of dust off his shoulder like Luke Skywalker just yeah to brush off the haters I hated that bit mate so much <laughs> so much <coughs> we'll we move swiftly on we'll move swiftly on uh, in fact I still owe Stingray for what I did to his copy of The Last Jedi so really I hope he doesn't here he is I can hear him now pulling up the drive oh. peek out the grate yeah, he's here. He's here. He's here. 
Okay, it's that time of the week, guys. It's what we affectionately call Stingray Boot. So what's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle of Endor this week? Uh, he's out the car. He's looking at us. It looks like in that boot, Tom. Not only has he got some counterfeit Easter eggs, <laughs> but he's got himself... He's only gone and got himself a pirate copy of Episode Nine. Rise of Skywalker. Right. <laughs> I don't Unbelievable. Know how how I don't, has he got that on? It's Stingray. It, ask no questions. We'll give it a watch, can't we? We, we can try it. It's probably on a rainy Saturday be. afternoon. Yeah. That'll make some good watching. Um, yeah, by the time it comes out, we'll have worn yeah. we'll, we'll the wheels off of yeah. it. Yeah. These are the new release highlights for the week, April 15th to April the 21st, 2019. Listeners, these are out on digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed, but could be region dependent. Um... Do you want to go? I'll tell you what, Tom, you go first. Uh, okay, so we've got Anno 1880 on the PC. Uh, it's out April 16th. Um, Anno 18, 1880, lead the Industrial Revolution. Welcome to the dawn of the Industrial Age. The path you choose will define your world. Are you an innovator or an exploiter, a conqueror or a liberator? How the world remembers your name is up to you. That looks to be one of those games you like. It's real time strategy. Is it more like a civilization, or are I we think, talking like? I, I, didn't, I didn't look into it. It looks like a cross between the two, but it's definitely okay. already out by the time this podcast is live, and our PC fans can probably key us into that. Whether it's any good, yeah, uh, let us know. Any PC it's gamers? Dog poo. Uh, <laughs> my choice. Yeah. Final Fantasy X and the X Two Remaster on the Xbox One and Switch, April sixteenth. Uh, Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster celebrates two of the most cherished and beloved entries to the world-renowned franchise, completely remastered in gorgeous high definition, now available on Xbox One and Switch. A good game to have on the go, I would say. Um, I mean, I've got them on the Vita. I've got them numerous times all over the shop. Uh, I recommend you pick that up on the Switch Mm -hmm. if you haven't got that already. Um, I'll do another one. World War Z on the PS4, Xbox One and Switch, April 16th. I've already seen some guys reviewing and releasing footage of this. But World War Z is a thrilling four-player cooperative third-person shooter featuring massive swarms of zombies that recklessly recklessly rush their living prey. Focused on fast-paced gameplay and based on the incredible popular Paramount Pictures property of the same name. World War Z explores new storylines and characters from around the world in tense, overwhelming, gruesomely exciting missions. The swarm feels neither fear nor mercy. It rolls forward to spread and consume. Together, make your stand and unload an arsenal of deadly weaponry into three's hundreds of swarming zombies. Feel the satisfying rush of life as you cheat death and prevail against such overwhelming odds. Cut the undead down with rocket launchers, machine guns, sentries, turrets, grenade launchers, barbed wire and more. So that's World War Z on the PS4, Xbox One and PC. Uh, like I say, I've seen some footage of that. Looks absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Not because it's like you know, Resident <laughs> Evil style terrifying, but the actual volume of zombie that's on rushing you yeah. is mind-blowing. Uh, now, this game's quite brave coming out. Ten days, I believe, ten days yeah, before, before days, gone. days Gone. They they are zombie games, but they look m- massively different zombie games. Yeah. This one's very much in the style of Left 4 Dead. This seems like a bit like those movies you get launched around the same time as another movie of, like, Jurassic Park, and then you see one called Jurassic Games, I don't know, in Stingray's boot. Yeah quality one of those moments yeah, yeah. Uh, well World War Z is obviously tied to a, a great book it's tied to yeah. a less than great film um, did you not like the film I thought it was okay I'd read the book ah uh, okay so the film was yeah. a bit of a letdown because I wasn't okay. expecting to see what I saw I was expecting something totally different I don't know why right no uh, that's uh, understandable but like I say I've seen some streams of this I've seen a review of this apparently it's got some quite high. bad glitches also so what, this Be has? wary, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know about this. It's yeah, top top news. So I did the. I said, "Mummy, mummy, please, may I have Final Fantasy X and X two on the Switch?" Tom, mummy, mummy, what are you asking? Can I for? finally have Cuphead on the Switch? Available April eighteenth, not 
the fourteenth. I don't know where I got that from last well, week. Why, so apologies for that. that. Wasn't, that's why it wasn't in the very strictly curated new releases. We talked about it all episode. Yeah. Then we got to the new release. It was absent. Yeah, so that comes out um, April eighteenth. You got your copy from Stingray, don't forget. Well, yeah, that's true. That's probably so why it was big that from. Get it early. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cuphead is a classic run and gun action game heavily focused on boss battles inspired by cartoons in the 1930s the visuals and audios are painstakingly created with the same techniques of the era i.e. like traditional hand drawn cell animation watercolour backgrounds and original jazz recordings Beautiful. when you see it in action Beautiful it looks phenomenal game. and it reminds me of the uh, I'm a kid very much of the TV generation so I was just left in front of the TV and that educated me and, and grew me into the man I am today. Mm-hmm. Thank God for Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> and there was a time where these sort of cartoons were on very yeah. early in the morning. Right. And as soon as I saw Cuphead running it just ticked all these nostalgia. It reminded me of um, some of the older Popeye cartoons some I had on video Popeyes, as a kid. Some of the... Um, I remember being really into like Felix the Cat and there was also some early um, Disney animations of like I think it was Goofy, but they were like they're almost like government health warning videos. Like right. this is what will happen to the automobile. They, they were really cool, and there's some of that element that's been incorporated into Cuphead as well. Fantastic. So yeah, I'll be Beautiful I'll game. be picking that up uh, and sort of talking about it next week. Um, Exciting! It'll be nice to know how it converts down to the Switch. Yeah. Because you've yeah. played it on Xbox One. I have, yes. So um, you'll be well placed to give us the yeah, thoughts see on the comparison. Okay. I'm interested to try on the handheld mode and hopefully it's so not we've got uh, changed too much. one last thing nestled between the counterfeit eggs and episode nine. We've got Konami Anniversary Collection Arcade Classics on the Switch, releases April 18th. In celebration with the 50th anniversary since Konami was founded, this anniversary collection series highlights many of the iconic arcade games and classic console, console titles that have been loved by fans throughout the years and are made available on many of the latest platforms. From shooters to action, these collections are packed with beloved titles that are simple to play and yet dipped into the core. Konami welcomes everyone from those who are glued to their CRT TVs or the arcade machines back in the day to first-time players to enjoy part of our history. All collections will be digital exclusive and can be downloaded from the various online stores. We give our utmost gratitude to each and every fan from all over the world for playing our games throughout the years. Well, it looks quite cool. Um, but nice. They're reaching out to their fans and we reach out to ours. If you've got this far, guys, and you've enjoyed what you've listened to, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could just look us out, however you're listening to us, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, the Silky Toned Amazon Alexa, Google Podcasts, whether you've just found us on the internet, if you found us in the corner of the dark web, wherever it is you found us, if you could like, subscribe, tell a friend, and spread the love, we would be, Tom, I know you would be, and I would be as well, super humble. Uh, and we're super humbled by the listener letters that we've had. I'd be happier. The only way I could be happier is if I was at home, in my Chewbacca dressing gown, with me Jar Jar plush. If only we could recreate that Jar Jar plush for you, but he's yeah. he's ash now, my friend. He he's is. gone. And I guess that's all like we've got Lord time. Vader. Like Lord Vader, he's ash. And on that bombshell, I guess we should say it's time. That's all we've got time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. Tom, may the force be with you. May the force be with you.